what is a deposition and why does it matter? Depositions are fact finding, it's fact finding discovery actually. We depose the person that caused the accident, we depose the owner of the vehicle, we depose anybody that can give us good information about how the accident happened, policy information, any witnesses, any law enforcement officer that may have seen the accident or can talk to us about the accident. We depose people that are before and after witnesses, people that knew you before and people that know you after. At the same time, they also depose yourself, you, they depose any fat before and after witnesses, and they depose any doctors and things to that effect, as we do. The premise of the deposition is they're asking questions to find out what was your previous, if you had any previous injuries, if you had any previous accidents, if you had any previous issues, because their job, the insurance company's job, is to mitigate and to reduce as much as possible the damage to their client, to their insurance company. So they're looking for a way to say, you're not that injured because you have this. You're not injured because you have this. You miss these visits on this visit. Um, you don't want to get surgery because you didn't get a surgery in the past two years. So their job is to ask those type of questions. Some things to remember. That's, it's a draining process and it takes a long time. By law, they have seven hours. Normally, they don't take seven hours. Sometimes they'll break it up and they'll do other depositions, but normally it's one deposition. It's between two to three hours, typically. Depends on how detailed the deposition is. Some do's and don'ts is you want to be truthful because they know your information. We need to know your information before you have the deposition. That way we're prepared if something happens. But they want to know, they want to know the information about um, all your previous accidents. They have it. The insurance company has a huge database that they have all these claims, all these things. They can find what's wrong with you. They, if they're asking you very direct questions, they know the answer. If you lie to them, they'll say you committed fraud on the court and then they'll try to get paid for their time wasted because of you lied to the court. So we wanna make sure we're truthful with them. You wanna keep your answers very concise. Answer only the question asked. A lot of times in conversation, we like to ramble, we like to talk, we like to do all these things, but in the deposition, you wanna be very, very concise in your answers. Yes, no, and answer only what you need to answer. In fact, if they ask an opening question, try to answer only the opening question. The only time I suggest going a little bit longer is how has this accident affected your life and how these injuries have affected your life. That's when you have the opportunity to talk about how it's affected your, your time with your kids, you know, whatever, whatever, how it's affected your life. You go into detail there. They'll ask you questions about that as well, but that supports your injuries of why you're going through what you're going through because of their negligence. When they ask the question, do you want to ask, do you want to add anything else? After the deposition, after they've gone for two hours, the answer should always be no, not at this time. Because the more you talk, the more questions they ask you. And sometimes they'll keep asking you that question. Uh, is there anything else that we didn't cover? Would you like to add anything else? Would you like to add anything? And when you're done with that, they'll ask you again, do you want to add anything else? And they keep doing this over and over and over again to see if you say something that can work in their favor and they keep asking you questions about that. So always, after you've gone through this long process and we're part of it, and we'll, we can object if the question's ambiguous, if it's confusing, but we can't stop the deposition unless they're, being, they're harassing you, they're embarrassing you, or, they're, or they're, they're out of line. But for the most part, that doesn't happen. If the question is confusing, we can make an objection to form. The form of the question is confusing. But when they finally get to the end, they say, do you have anything else to add? Say, no, there's nothing else for me to add. Because that will save us a lot of time. And the more information you give them, the worse it is if you keep adding more and more stuff. So it's stay to the facts of how it's affected your life, your, your medical, be honest with them and we're still in the room with you, we're still helping you through this whole process. And we're doing the same thing with their client as well. We're asking questions about their background, if they, you know, why, what they were doing driving that time, they had the lights on, so we're looking for negligence, and we're looking for their client's negligence, and they're looking for liability. Can they switch liability, saying that you're kind of at fault and they're not as, as at fault, and they're looking to your damages of your body. Can they reduce the amount of that they're gonna pay you for your injuries? It's a game, it's a back and forth, it's a chess game, and the idea is 
Can they catch you slipping? And if the answer is yes, they're gonna, they're gonna pull on that string as much as they can. So whenever you get closer to the depot, they say, is there anything else? No, but you have to be truthful throughout the depot.